When you're deploying a new application, you likely want to pass some form of information, values or variables into that application that your application might even depend on. Now those values information might either be sensitive information or unsensitive information. In case there's sensitive information, you might want to be using Kubernetes secrets or some other sort of uh, secret management tool. However, if they are unsensitive information that people can actually see, you could be using configuration files to make sure that your application knows what it's supposed to be doing. Now, those configuration files could be directly connected to your Docker build process. So your Docker image has already those information ingrained and they will be used within your running containers, within your pods, within your cluster. However, sometimes we want to be passing dynamic, more dynamic variables into our build process into our uh, running containers. And for that, we could be using config maps, which we're going to be looking at today. Welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, welcome. My name is Anise. I'm currently doing 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I am to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. Today, we're going to be looking at config maps. Now, config maps are a form of volume because we're gonna be mounting some form of resource to our running containers, to our uh, cluster, to our pods within the cluster. So those are different than the volumes that we explored in the previous video. Now the volumes that we explored in the previous video are used to store information. Check out the video below. <laughs> no, but if we have some form of configuration that we want to be passing into our running containers, into our running pods, then we could be using a config map. And uh, that config map might either be a file or directory with that information. Now, when we're using config maps, we want to be careful not to overuse them. If we use specific config maps per our environments, so for example, one config map for a staging environment, one config map for our production environment, we can easily fall into the trap of making our um, config maps specific and our application specific to our environments. So our, our application is no longer dynamic and can't easily be promoted from one environment to the other. So when you're using config maps, you likely want to be using it for smaller applications and for really specific use cases. Now, just a quick reminder, I'm sharing all of the content that I use to produce this video and to learn about the topic on my public Notion page, link below. So now we just set up this file, config map YAML, and we're going to paste in the information that I have also set up uh, within the Notion page. So we're just going to set those up and then we're going to create those, like this resource, this config map, like any other Kubernetes resource. Um, we're just going to go ahead. As you can see here, we have here some keys. We have our, well, our database and our normal Kubernetes resource information, like always. So we're gonna go ahead and create that. So now this config map is gonna is being created. And now we want to have a pod. Now we say pod of example YAML. Okay, and then we're gonna paste in our pod definition that we have also set up already within the Notion page. And that's how handy it is if you have written notes. <laughs> so we have that and this is just okay so this is our pod definition our pod, pod resource <laughs> now we're gonna say kubectl apply and we say pod example yaml and we're gonna create a resource as well and now kubectl get pods and we can say that the pod is being created okay so let's check that our pods are actually running so kubectl get pods again. So it is running run. So it's a while since I made some mistakes, but that's okay. So we can have a look at what's inside of our config map. In this case, we have database, database UI and keys. In this case, just to demonstrate, I'm going to be having a look at the keys section. And I'm going to do that through this command, which is similar to the one before. And as you can see that what we specified here, the values that we specified in our config map are now within the key section. Now I haven't really worked with Mongo or anything, <laughs> so don't ask me much about it. Um, I just think it's cool that you can specify something and then your container has access, like the application that's running has access to whatever you define within your config map, uh, which is basically just that. That's what it's supposed to demonstrate over here. So that is it for today. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, it must be that you're serious about learning Kubernetes and you might want to join our DevOps learning group. How do you join, you ask? Good question. Well, just message me on Twitter, link, link below, and I can add you to the group. I hope this was useful and I hope to see you next time. Hit like and subscribe to my channel for my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.